Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Tom Jensen. We begin our series of fishing previews this week. My guest is Paul Bailey. Paul is the District Fishery Supervisor for South Central District. Mm -hmm. Paul, the uh, lower portion of the Missouri River, actually Lake Oahe is part of your district. You've already got some fishing activity going on here and have for quite some time, as right. mild as the winter was. Absolutely, yeah. Despite today's cold and wind, I guess, uh, the spring has treated anglers pretty nice on the Missouri River and Lake Oahe, you know, from Garrison Dam down to the South Dakota border. And even better, the fish have been pretty cooperative this spring. There's been uh, yeah, you know, some pretty successful anglers out there already. Right, if they're in the right spot at the right time. Right, that's always part of the battle, <laughs> but uh, you know, fishing's been good this spring. Yeah, you had some forage issues on Lake Oahe after the flood of 2011. Yeah. What's the situation on that now? Have they come around at all the smelt? Yeah, I guess a couple of things combined to cause those forage issues. One, we had such extraordinary fishery production in 2009 uh, when high water returned. You kind of ended the drought, high water returned to the North Dakota portion of Lake Oahe. Fish reproduction was off the charts good that year, really too good for the long-term good of the fishery. We had a lot of mouths to feed uh, starting in 2009 with a tremendous walleye reproduction, northern pike, white bass, uh, catfish, you name it, they reproduced well that year. So there was a lot of demand for forage out there. Uh, and then the flood of 2011 happened, which really impacted uh, forage production in Lake Oahe. You know, it caused some smelt, uh, really reduced the smelt population in the lower portion of Lake Oahe, but also led to very poor reproduction of our warm water forage species in the, the North Dakota portion of Lake Oahe and the Missouri River. So we had all those mouths to feed, poor forage conditions. That led to some, you know, I guess subpar sizes of fish uh, in the in the river in Lake Oahe since then. We had all those walleye that were produced in 2009 made it to that, you know, say 11, 12, 13 inch range, and then they kind of quit growing uh, with the, the lack of forage out there. So the good news is, is it took till, you know, I guess about 2014 is when we saw some real forage fish recovery. Um, we had good reproduction of warm water forage fish species like young of the year, uh, white bass, crappie, uh, no, I'm trying to think, you know, you name it, they reproduced fairly well in 2014. That uh, really started turning the tide. So those uh, super abundant fish, you know, our 2009 year class of walleye, all of a sudden that fall of 2014, got some groceries, they put on a couple inches of growth. Uh, so last year, a lot of anglers saw, you know, a lot of, I'd say 15 to 17 inch walleye instead. So a lot of anglers are a lot happier. Uh, we've had fairly decent uh, for warm water forage fish production uh, in 2015 too. So. Uh, you know, what we're seeing this spring are a lot of those, you know, 16, 17, 18 inch walleye. So uh, we've kind of turned the tide there. Uh, we've got a lot nicer size structure of walleye in the system right now. Paul, you don't have very many big lakes in your district other than Lake Oahe, but you do have some real fishing gems in a lot of these smaller lakes. Absolutely, yeah, that, well, that really started, uh, you know, the, in the mid-90s, that, uh, you know, kind of the wet cycle we've been in ever since, you know, we formed a lot of these new lakes, and some, I mean, some very noteworthy fisheries, you know, Dry Lake, Alkaline Lake, places like that, that have really produced for anglers for, for a number of years now. You have a number of species, you've rattled off quite a few of them already. Mm -hmm. Let's go through these species one by one and start with walleye. Uh, walleye fishing should be very good in our district lakes this year. I mean, the Missouri River, Lake Oahe, obviously, I think are, are going to be good this year, but a number of our district lake fisheries, uh, you know, some of our more noteworthy fisheries that anglers have, you know, fished the, you know, the, the past few years uh, should continue to be good, you know, like dry, alkaline, uh, Josephine, Jasper, places like that, uh, I anticipate will produce very well for anglers this year. Rice Lake, another one down by Strasburg, a consistently good walleye fishery. So there's lots of good walleye opportunity on the horizon this year. Seems like everybody's got northern pike. Yeah, northern pike uh, really boomed with this, this most recent high water period. You know, it started in that spring of 2009 uh, where we gained a lot of water in a lot of our lakes. Uh, pike really took off. So there's, there's also very good pike opportunity out there uh, right now as well. Uh, maybe not as good as long-term prospects with our, our pike populations tend to thrive under these rising water conditions. Uh, we haven't dealt with that for a few years now. Basically, we've been dealing with stable to declining water levels since, you know, about 2012. So uh, pike populations are kind of holding steady, uh, but, you know, we're hoping we can keep some of this water around, I guess, a little bit to keep these pike, you know, that pike opportunity out there. If it's any evidence, the winter fishing, the ice fishing now for panfish in your districts this past winter, particularly perch and crappies, 
Uh, crappies was a real nice surprise, and the size of some of the fish in uh, in Lake Oahe was incredible. Yep, that was the the Lake Oahe crappies are, are one of those kind of you know I I'd almost view it as once in a lifetime you know opportunities here. We've never seen crappie numbers like this in Oahe before. There's always been crappie present in Oahe, you know, and anglers stumbled on them from time to time. But what we're seeing out there now again is the result of this extraordinary reproduction we saw in 2009. Now we always see. Pretty good crappie reproduction in Lake Oahe every year. I mean, when we do our netting in the fall, I mean, there's millions and millions of what we call young of the year crappie in Oahe, you know, that are, you know, those two, two and a half inch long fish. What crappie struggle with in Lake Oahe is making it through that first winter. They're usually not large enough to have the energy reserves to make it through that first winter. In 2009, when that water came back up, the invertebrate forage production in Oahe was just extraordinary. So instead of these, uh, young of the year crappie being two, two and a half inches, a lot of them were three, three and a half inches. So that made them just large enough that they had the energy reserves to make it through that first winter. So almost all the crappie that anglers were catching in Oahe last year were from that 2009 year class. So glad anglers were able to take advantage of them, but there's not a lot behind them. You know, so our, there's always going to be some crappie there, but in these numbers, uh, I hope anglers took advantage of it because it's, it is, I, I'd almost view it as a once in a lifetime opportunity on Oahe right now. The perch fishing, Paul, in some of your uh, the lakes in your district was exceptional and we can attribute that um, now to a project that you guys did, you and your crews, probably starting, what, seven or eight years ago, the trap and transport. Would you yep. explain how they did that? Sure, uh, that really, I guess we, we were very aggressive in trying to establish new perch fisheries. Again, another once in a lifetime opportunity or, or close to it with uh, the, the high water that we started experiencing again, you know, in 2009, 10 and 11, those three terrible winters, uh, you know, were, were hard on a lot of our wildlife, but one place that did benefit, you know, uh, North Dakota outdoorsman, I guess, was uh, in all the fisheries we were able to establish. So with all these new lakes forming on the landscape, uh, we were very aggressive in trying to establish new perch fisheries. So we went to some lakes that had an abundance of uh, adult perch, maybe perch that were too abundant for the lake, you know, that uh, you know weren't growing as well, uh, too many perch in that particular lake for the amount of groceries available. So we trapped some of those perch. Uh, while well, they still had their eggs in them in the spring and then stocked them in a number of other lakes around the state. And actually, we, we probably were able to establish about 30 different perch fisheries across South Central North Dakota doing this, trapping adult fish from one lake, stocking them in another where they naturally reproduced and produced some of these extraordinary fisheries that anglers have seen in recent years. I'm going to put you on the spot like we do every year. I'm not asking for any of your honey holes that I know you, mm -hmm. you love to frequent. Take a day off. Uh, go fishing, not necessarily today, it's a little windy and a little yeah. cold, but uh, take a day off, take the family fishing or whatever, where would you go and what would you do? Oh, I'd be, I guess, yeah, first of all, waiting for a little nicer weather than we got today, which is, I mean, it's right on the horizon, I guess, but I, I'd try and take advantage of some of these pike populations we got on the landscape right now. I'd probably big, look... Big pike, too. <laughs> yeah, there's, I mean, Oahe, it'd be a great opportunity to try and target larger pike, but some of our district lakes would be pretty spectacular as well. I mean, Helen, Horsehead, Cherry, uh, Alkaline Lake, you know, places like that where you can get in some good shore fishing for pike this time of year, that'd be hard to pass up. All right, Paul, thanks. Thank you. Jason Lee joins us now. Jason is the district supervisor for the North Central District for Game and Fish. Uh, Jason, historically, when we come up here to do these reports with you, it's usually windy or rainy, but now this year pretty much takes the cake. <laughs> <laughs> Snow falling. All nice. right, yeah. Let, let's talk about the fisheries in your district. You actually have some very unique fisheries in your district. We do, yeah. Uh, the one I usually mention every year is Nelson Lake in the, in the largemouth bass down in Nelson Lake. Uh, it's unique in, in that it's a, a warm water lake because of the power plant on the lake. Sure. So uh, the warm water species like uh, largemouth bass, bluegill, and crappie do really well in that lake. And all three, three of those species are doing well in Nelson Lake right now. Um, other unique, we've got uh, trout lakes scattered around the district. Uh, Strawberry Lake up in the Turtle Mountains gets stocked annually with rainbow trout. We've had several mild winters up there, uh, so we've got some carryover trout. Haven't had any winter kill up there, so there's some larger trout in there too. Uh, Lightning Lake has a decent number of trout. Uh, Velva Sportsman's Pond up by Velva uh, is okay for, for trout. Jason, the jewel of your district probably is right behind us, Lake Audubon, great fishery. 
Yeah, it really is. Uh, we just wrapped up a creel survey on Lake Audubon mid-March. Uh, that's where we have a creel clerk on the lake interviewing anglers and uh, especially early ice and late ice. We had some really good walleye fishing out here. A little slower during the middle of the winter, but uh, but good fishing. Uh, saw some smallmouth bass in the creel survey, a uh, few muskies. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, uh, a lot of 14 to 16 inch walleyes caught on Audubon this winter. And I would expect the same this summer. Audubon's probably the largest lake in your district. You also have some really good smaller lakes as well. We do, yep. Uh, one uh, that I would recommend trying is Harmony Lake, north of uh, a Hazen. Sure. It's a good little bluegill fishery, great place to take kids fishing. And uh, we've got a, a fair number of those scattered around the district. You also manage now the Garrison Diversion String of Lakes too as well, right? Right, yep. That'd be uh, New Johns, Heckers, East Park, and West Park. Uh, they're connected with the McCluskey Canal. Uh, and as far as fisheries over there, the smallmouth bass are doing really well in the canal lakes. Uh, uh, when people call me about a place to fish for smallies, I'll usually send them, send them <laughs> down there. Good numbers and good sizes of fish. Sure. You might have more species in your district than most of the other guys. Uh, let's talk about them and let's single them out one at a time. Start with walleyes. Sure. Uh, walleye again in Lake Audubon, that's, that's probably our number one walleye lake. Uh, lake Metagoshi has a good population of walleye. Uh, Crooked Lake up north of Turtle Lake is pretty good. Uh, we've got a couple up in Pierce County, Antelope Lake and Clear Lake. Both had, have good numbers and, and sizes of walleye uh, in them. Uh, Brush Lake over, over east of here too is good. So yeah, good number of walleye lakes. Most of the districts in the state have great northern populations. You do as well. Right, yeah. Uh, Buffalo Lodge was good this winter. That's probably our, our best pike lake. Uh, McCody Lake is one that's come on in recent years. Uh, bunch of new water up there and, and we were stocking it about the right time so that's a good pike lake. Um, yeah, Brush Lake has a good number of pike in it with some, some larger fish. One thing in your district that kind of gives it a different twist is you have muskies. Right, uh, we started stocking muskies in Lake Audubon six years ago. Uh, been putting in fairly conservative numbers, 2,000 to about 8,000 a year is about it. But uh, we saw a couple of them in our netting surveys last summer, and they were about 28 inches long. I uh, had reports of a few being caught by anglers this winter and released. And of course, we have a 48 minimum size limit on muskies in North Dakota, so if you do catch one, less than 48 inches you're uh, legally supposed to release make, it. Make so. sure it's legal sure. Yep. And then uh, Cadell Lakes also get stocked with musky annually. All right. Uh, how about panfish and you mentioned trout already. Right. Uh, panfish, uh, bluegill up in Lake Metagoshi, uh, some crappie in Metagoshi too. Uh, we've got a bunch of perch lakes scattered throughout the district. Um, yeah. And then uh, yeah we talked about trout a little bit. Uh, Velva Sportsman's Pond, Lightning, mm -hmm. Strawberry Lake uh, up in the Turtle Mountains gets stocked annually. Sure. That variety of fish that you have in your district, Jason, kind of gives you the luxury of having some really good ice fishing as well. Right, right. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, uh, pike seem to be uh, biting pretty good in several lakes this winter. Uh, perch, good early on. I heard some good reports, but overall I'd say it was an average to a slow year for uh, uh, perch in the district, but we have plenty of lakes that have perch in them. All right. I'm going to ask you the same question I ask everybody every year. Take a day off. Not today. <laughs> go fishing somewhere in your district and fish for any species. Where would you go and what would you do? Yeah, I, uh, given uh, the time of year, I guess I'd probably head up to the north arm of Audubon right now. There's usually a pretty good spring bite up there. and uh, walleye bite now? Uh, walleye about? bite, yep. That's, that's probably where I would go. All right. On a little nicer day. <laughs> Jason, thanks. You bet. If you plan to fish any of the lakes mentioned in Outdoors Online, or actually nearly every lake in North Dakota for that matter, the new March-April edition of North Dakota Outdoors magazine is an invaluable tool. The special fishing edition has information on almost every fishable lake in the state, including fish species contained in a body of water, directions on how to get to the lake from the nearest town, and whether or not the lake has boating access. 
You can also find that information at the Game and Fish website at gf.nd.gov. Plus, there are topographical maps of most lakes available at the website too. For Paul Bailey, Jason Lee, and the rest of the staff here at North Dakota Game and Fish, thanks for joining us for Outdoors Online. See you again next week.